we've got about 10 minutes left, I'd like to close on the discussion around standards. Um, so let's let's talk about the role of MEF and in, in, in standards going forward in this uncertain dynamic world of mobile video and data. Uh, I'll start down there and come back. And, but or Roy, you can jump in on, on standards. Do we need them? <laughs> Most of my, I would say all of my customers are enterprises and they're pushing ahead with new technology and all, all of the vendors, including ourselves, are pushing on the technology. And the standards seem to kind of get engaged and join on behind. And I'm particularly thinking of real, the faster Ethernet, the 100 um, GE that uh, everyone's been looking at recently, we have in products. Uh, yes, there is an IEEE standard, but it's not something that we all waited for somebody to publish and then read carefully and had meetings about it and then implemented the chips. Uh, sometimes the standards is, um, certainly for enterprises, is, is, is not something you necessarily wait for. The, the, the real pressure is to get something done that will work and stay stable in the time at the right price, right price per bit. And uh, standards, yeah, it should be, if possible, in line. If there isn't a standard, and, and we can still achieve interoperation, I'm not sure that many of my customers are going to use lose a lot of sleep. They will lose a lot of sleep about compliance, not complying with safety rules, banking rules, those kind of things. Those are important, but I distinguish between that kind of standard and the technology standard of how many bits there are to the to the packet frame. I'm not, I'm not sure they're. They're obviously necessary, but they're not sufficient to make technology progress. Well, I was just going to say that I think obviously standards do give you a baseline to work from, but they're not there keeping pace with technology. They're always going to be in catch-up mode. There's going to be new technologies, new things coming out that people will adopt because it just works. It's like Ethernet against token ring. Ethernet is a far better chipset, far more efficient to implement and run. Old other technologies, some might argue were better, get left behind because the more efficient one will take take it forward, and that's the way it's going to continue. The more efficient chipsets, the more efficient technology will drive us forward, and then the standards will catch up with them eventually. But there's more and more products coming out, and more and more uh, platforms as well. So the, the standards need to be spread across. It's a much broader portfolio. So yeah, they feel more like suggestions to me. <laughs> 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 um, we could go into systems integration mode and uh, I can plug a layer one radio network into three different switches and have three different systems configuration problems. They're all gigabit Ethernet, so I'm not sure, I must have missed a chapter in the book that says if you want to confuse your systems integrator, toggle this piece of code. <laughs> so um, maybe it's standard confusion, um, but I think it's more of a suggestion. Yeah, I, I like to say that standards kind of misuse the term. It's not about agreement, it's about alignment. And the reason standards exist is because we're a very complex world we live in. And the reason that we use standards is so that we can be more efficient in how we react. So uh, if I have a standardized way of doing things and I go to a carrier the next carrier, and he has following the same standard, so it means we're both in agreement on alignment to that standard, which means that we can be certified quicker together, the whole bit, there's a whole layer of communication and education that doesn't have to go on, which makes us more efficient to react better. So I think that, you know, standards are, are uh, very much so reactionary, they can be. I know some st standards uh, aren't, uh, but I think that, um, you know, it's necessary um, to have a common goal and to, you know, all work together to solve the same problem and, and, and kind of the standards bodies make that happen. Yeah, I think my observation you had for decades, the um, standard bodies in some way keeping the OEMs in check so the traditional carriers would want organized suggestions in case, uh, for, the, for the OEMs to say, we need to build to a standard so we're less likely to get locked in. They still get locked in, but they, they're less likely to get locked in. What's interesting today is the web center guys, you know, the Googles, Facebooks that are moving so fast and are so far ahead of the curve that they are stripping out anything proprietary and getting down to the bare metal to the, so that if they have a 
function they need, they develop something that is finely tuned to solve that function. You walk the floor down there and you look at what HP has out on the floor. They've got these white boxes that have been uh, manufactured by Foxconn, but the design specs came from the web center guys. And then out of that, they derived a, a new product line, cloud line, if you will, that's, quote, somewhat standards based, but the standards really set by the open source community or code that the web sector guys contributed in. To the, the, so is it, my question really is, is, is that a new world order for the way standards get built? Uh, I mean, you shake your head. I think that's right. what your view is. I absolutely agree. Yeah, yeah. I think that they're reshaping the law of the industry and then how the box manufacturers are responding. Yeah, like that, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of, well, if there's money, you can do a lot of things. Yeah. If you don't have constraints, so as an exa example, some ca carriers that are, you know, I'd say the Facebooks and those guys are starting to compete against these guys. Big yeah. um, some carriers have a lot more responsibility, though. Like the central bank in some country has to close at the end of the day. I don't think that if you follow the model that uh, some of these guys are following, they have that type of project for that kind of responsibility. So I think that it all involves with time. Everybody has their, their value. Um, you know, it's good to have stuff outside of a sta standard that's uh, forward thinking, but we still have some serious constraints or, or things that we have to, to do uh, to make the economy work. We got about five minutes left. I would like to pause, and um, we got a couple troublemakers out in the audience. Does anyone want to raise your hand and ask a question? Um, first and foremost, I think it was great. Uh, panel was wonderful. It's more a comment than a question, and perhaps I don't know if you guys see this in different geographies. But my my sense is that as carriers, um, we're we're in trouble. We we need to rethink what we do and how we do things. Um, and the funding and the money right now is actually on the side of the web scale companies uh, who are investing. And if, if they don't reach a price point that they want, or if they don't have the capacity that they're looking for, they're just going to go out and build it themselves. They're not even going to buy it from you. They're actually trying to flip the market to say, we'll buy it. And if you want to come here and help me out to run it, then I'll pay for it. Um, that, that, those are some of the things that we're seeing. Um, and I don't know if you're, you're exposed to basically the same stuff uh, in the different geography. Well, we see, um, we've got a couple of different models of revenue that kind of fit into different buckets. I think, uh, I think it was Greg who said it, you know, we're forced to be customer reactive because that's, and I also apologize for being the money grubbing uh, capitalist pig who opened the money conversation is driving all things, but it, unfortunately it does. I mean, yeah. you know, I'd sit back and talk about uh, daisies and sunshine and roses, and we're going to still sit here and have the same problems, but we respond to what our customers look for. We we started off doing nothing but bespoke builds. Our goal was always to become a carrier's carrier and enable kind of niche, very high-performance type solutions, and I think we've achieved that, but even to this day, even as I sit here and talk, we have projects going on right now that are capital builds where we'll get... Uh, you know, kind of a, a penance on the backside for, for managing the thing, but we do that because there's other more strategic things we can still play. I think Rob was making a good point earlier uh, just about the difference between a bank and Facebook and the need to close at the end of the day. And if you look at the geometry issue of networks and the absolute need for layering through different technologies, different capabilities, et cetera, et cetera, that's the perfect example of where that kind of fits in. So I think. Uh, I don't know that I'd say that we're in trouble. I just think we need to have open minds and be thinking less, uh, you know, old school, if you will, because, you know, 20 years ago was the green phone on the wall. They had the cord that you heard voices and you had the little rotary dial. And, I mean, today it's this. I mean, what's next? I mean, the implant in your eyeball? I don't know. Um, but it's certainly going to change. I think there's no doubt that we're in a transformational stage. I mean, you know, there's space internet discussion. Uh, Elon Musk is going to actually, you know, develop a way to deploy satellites small and cheaply and fast uh, um, to, you know, develop a mesh network of s satellites. Someday it's going to happen. Someone's going to. Do it. So uh, we're, but if, but if you look at um, the two economic, one's a commodity play with many, many users, and the more people you have 
the more power you have. One is a very finite industrial automation where security, privacy, my data is very important to me and I will keep it. They're two different things. And I think that, um, you know, slowly, if you're big, you're going to take more market share on the consumer, consumer side of things. But if you're precise and listen and are more of a, uh, I want to solve your business problem, you're going to get more of the enterprise industrial automation type of business, and there is investment for that. So, any other questions? Comments? I was just going to say thanks. It's been educational for me, and uh, I've learned um, that there is no crystal ball. <laughs> and blame Roy for that one, as you said. But uh, it, the, the common question in any sort of interview status is that where are we going to be in five years' time? And from the panel, you've, you've already answered that. Nobody knows. Would you agree with that? Where are we going to be in five years? Five Older. <laughs> I hope. I reckon we're going to be in the same position. We're going to have technology for now, it's different than it was five years ago. We're going to be up to here in chaos. We're going to wish there was a standard. We're going to be pushing ahead. The people who can pay for things will pay for them. The rest of the things will get ignored. And it will feel like it feels now. And then they'll still be talking about the Internet of Things as well. In five years. <laughs> it seems as if we're going down the line of charging per bit and you know, it, it's more monetizing the the, uh, the data than actually the, you, what you can put down. Well, there's always a supply and demand story, right? right? You know, when the supply starts drying up, you can charge more for it. And so, as we said, you know, if, if there is um, a limited resources, be it in a, a certain cell of uh, connectivity or in across a core transport link, then, you know, but I think we'll go up to respond to demand and to what people actually want. Maybe that will help drive more discipline as to what's actually being delivered over the network. So it's the, the current sort of infrastructure that's in like the UK is already out of date. So, you know, how long has that got? And are we, as soon as the, uh, the lines are uh, dug up and put down, they're digging up again? It seems that way on the roads anyway. It, uh, it's just the change is going to happen faster than anyone would like. And even, even millimeter wave is, is going to be one of those examples. Great future right now, but in the end, there's going to be spectrum problems, line of sight problems, all, all kinds of problems that I don't understand. They really are. But all resources seem to wear out, they yeah. fill up, and then we have to find a way of regulating them. Yeah. We either ration them on price or we, we do something different. But it's, we'll always just, just be able to pay for it. Yeah, I think. You hit the key word though, it's a resource. Yeah. And it's critical for us going going forward. And um, it's not, it, you know, there is value in, in some resources. It shouldn't be a commodity slide if it adds value. <clears throat> and so I think that's kind of the, uh, the question. What is someone willing to pay for value? And we've got, I'm saying, every IT cloud. Yeah. There is an underlying real network there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. We have one more question over yeah, here. So I just to thank you very much for that. It's really interesting. Um, do you think it's going to have to be regulation then that comes in that will mean that carriers are going to have to change the way they think about the future? Is that the only way that carriers are going to have to start really thinking about making sure that they're efficient, that they're using all the resources in the right way? And as you said, the carbon footprint, regulation comes in, so everyone has to start thinking about it. Well, <laughs> it's, a, kind of, yeah, it's a hybrid. It's really a hybrid, in my opinion, because what you're going to have is you're going to have resources that, as they become scarce or highly competed or sought after, will have some level of regulation put around, or at least governance put around it, I think. But what you're also going to have at the leading edge of that is the new stuff that hasn't been invented yet that nobody understands how to regulate. And that's what's going to drive where we're going to be in five years outside of Boulder. But the the new things that happen, and, and I was kind of front and center in this uh, in 2001 when millimeter wave existed on a pizza box in San Diego, California, and hadn't been deployed yet, we went to petition the FCC for spectrum rules. We could have done what 60 gigahertz did, by example. It's a very similar type of spectrum consumption from a resource standpoint, but we felt, given some of the characteristics, it would be good to have some governance for it. So we forced it onto the technology on purpose to optimize its use in a carrier-type network. So without a license, you can't guarantee an SLA. Without an SLA, no one's going to pay for it because it's the downtime of that SLA, which is where the real money gets lost, not the uh, not the expense of the hardware. 
So I, I think there's a hybrid with regulation and technology, and there's, I, I think there's always going to be a tugging of the, of the heart and purse strings in terms of you know what rules and when and how. Sometimes it'll be to make sure the technology works. Sometimes the technology will be so crazy. I mean, it, we won't know how to regulate it for some period of time. I'm not sure either one of those are good or bad. I just think it's the perpetual fluidity that we live in. And now with that, maybe you will see more of what has happened recently, where governments tend to regulate heavily on behalf of the people, and not necessarily not, not necessarily they should regulate heavily on behalf of the technology. The technology will find its own level. The privacy, data protection, security, they're not on in the technological equation, nor in the business model that might need some supervision. But I must say, having an English heart and an American passport two things make it treated differently on each side of the park. Do you have a German singer? I do have a German singer. This has been a great panel. I will say that at this event, Data Center Dynamics, so other than the power discussion that seems to be pervasive, the other discussion is sovereign data privacy, which is flattening out and requiring data centers, albeit lighter versions of data centers, in virtually every country. So one of the things I've heard coming out of this event is every country is going to have their own big data privacy, which is going to drive more data center build and more connectivity for all of you guys. So, but again, I think we've run out of time. Thank you so much, each of you, for your discussions, great questions.